start with the Irish Examiner this morning and it's a fairly grim story. It's Cyrus Christie. Uh, you don't speak out because nothing happens. Cyrus Christie lifts the lid on racism in football. It's kind of this angle again now of what happens when you do speak out and as the headline suggests here, nothing does tend to happen. It's Liam Mackey's piece with him in Italia and uh, I guess the, the grim nature of all of this is he describes the racial abuse he got on social media after the own goal against Denmark and the 5-1 loss in mm. the second leg of the playoff and just kind of his sense, his resigned sense that this is so utterly unsurprising. Mm. I fully expected to, to log on to Twitter and see this sort of stuff because it's not the first time he's encountered it and that football has kind of moved to the point now where you don't hear that stuff from the stands anymore uh, for uh, numerous reasons. One of them maybe because of better policing uh, and uh, like points being made of fans. I suspect it's not. I suspect it's because social media is just an easier alternative and a safer alternative mm. for those scumbags out there who want to hide behind uh, non-identity. So it's it's an, it, it's always important. Chris, he's spoken about it before. He's spoken about it again today. He's actually fascinating when he talks about this sort of stuff and he's a great ambassador for uh, this this sort of this story basically which isn't going anywhere no I think uh, and it's a good choice of words to use there as well I think that it's probably to do with it becoming and probably has passed become a cultural thing to not do so I think that's the reasons it disappeared if I'm being honest from the um, terrorism from the stands and from sporting grounds and generally in public it isn't really the accepted culturally thing to do we've um, and there's been a huge piece of work done around that, and that's great. It's obviously does rear its uh, pretty grotesque head on social media, where and not always from people who don't have, who are sort of hiding their identity, which is almost the mm. worrying aspect of this. But we'd be mistaken, and it'd be wrong to take the approach, I believe, to the problem of racism in football by addressing it as a problem in football because it really isn't, and it's a soci it's a so societal thing, and you don't really have to ever scratch too far in this country particularly, to discover that it does exist and it's pretty pervasive. Uh, and I do think that actually tackling it from a society point of view rather than saying this is a football issue would really be the uh, the way to go. But but but, but great stuff. And, and, and more that the more he speaks out, as painful as it might be for him, and there shouldn't be a requirement that he needs to do it, but the more he speaks out and the more it appears on the front pages of uh, newspapers like The Examiner this morning and fair play to them for doing it, uh, the better. Yeah, absolutely. It's not the only story about racism on the back pages today. We'll get to an English angle in The Guardian uh, in a few moments there, Adrian. But I'm going to move on to the Irish Independent. I'm not angry with Taylor, reads the headline here. That's a quote from Seamus Coleman. He's not wasting his time thinking about the Welsh player who broke his leg. That's Dan MacDonald and John Fallon's story on the back of the end. It seems to be a theme doing the rounds on a lot of the back pages this morning. But uh, before I move on, leg injury rules Larmer out of Leinster's Euro quarter final showdown with Saracens. It's Key and Tracy's story today in the end. And that is big news indeed uh, for Leinster uh, and also the, a story which you might have missed yesterday which uh, broke was that Claire Sarah O'Donnell earns Harvard scholarship so he could potentially be missing for the Claire Hurlers next season but I think the biggest element of this is that Shane O'Donnell's got a scholarship just to do his PhD in Harvard University so what's congratulations he do, what's to he doing him. Uh, I'm not quite sure so he's on the spot there yeah well I, the, when it comes to a PhD I it's, it's a Fulbright scholarship, mm. so I'm not sure do you have to submit what your okay. uh, candidature is going to be right. or what you're actually going right. to do it on. Uh, I certainly haven't seen what the story is. If anybody out there does know what Shane O'Donnell is going to go and do his PhD in, please do get in touch because that's the first question I had as well. Um, so, yeah, he's Fair part, the likelihood he's is big, he's going to be missing for a good big, chunk of the season. Big, big loss for Clare, obviously, and a guy that had started to show that he isn't just a goal merchant, that he can actually pick scores off from elsewhere as well. So, huge loss, but fair play to him. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's back to the football. Waste of time. I refuse to think about Taylor, says Coleman. That's Philip Quinn's angle on that story. While Zlatan bids farewell, United ahead of LA move confirmed yesterday the story broken by ESPN that Zlatan is no more at Manchester United he's going to move to LA Galaxy uh, at the end of the season let's just move on Coleman I hold no grudge over leg break tackle it's time to forget and carry on that's the back of the mirror as I say that is the story doing the round uh, you've also got Christy there carried uh, in the mirror with his uh, comments on racism the back of the sun then meanwhile says uh, it wasn't a great tackle but these things happen that's the Turkey versus Ireland uh, build up once again and Seamus Coleman saying he's got no grudge uh, against Taylor. And then the other one, the last football story really uh, for me for the time being is this one and it's back to Liam Kelly. Keen to stay green, Kelly still wants Ireland career. It's an exclusive by Mark McCadden here in the Irish Daily Star. He, the, Kelly isn't quoted in this story but 
uh, McAdam makes the point that he is committed to the boys in green and that this whole text message situation with Martin O'Neill isn't as big a deal as we might have thought or mm. people who thought it was a big deal might have thought. So uh, obviously he was born in England all, and all that, but he still has ambitions to play for the Republic of Ireland. It's just a pretty tough uh, stage in Reading season after Yap Stan got sacked and all of that sort of stuff. Mm. So I think that's a factor in that. As I say, he's not quoted, so we don't know what Kelly himself is saying, but the sounds are that club factors have been the main reason why Liam Kelly didn't accept the call-up. Yeah, we also don't know the details of that yet. That's the that's the issue with it. That um, We don't know, certainly that I've heard, how he was contacted by way of a call-up. Like, did was he text to say, here, we're going to include you in the squad, would you like to come and join us? And then he replied via text. We just don't know. And so actually hearing some of that detail would be good. But yeah, like the lack of an actual quote from him or from somebody to actually tell us exactly what it is that that's all about. Um, but I'm sure we'll find out a bit more over the next while. Uh, right, from uh, my end here, the front page of the Irish Times sports section this morning. It is really uh, all about the uh, football here. These uh, Cyrus Christie comments featuring here with Emmett Malone. Uh, who's in Turkey for this game uh, tonight. Uh, Captain Coleman back bearing no grudges. There was really two or three storylines that came out of the press conference yesterday ahead of this game uh, this evening. And Ireland hold out hopes for a striking difference. So uh, what the hell are we going to do in the absence of any recognised and uh, regular goal scorer at a decent level is kind of the main thing that I'm certainly considering that uh, like whatever shape Martin O'Neill and he's talking now about a 3-5-2, whatever shape he puts on the team, whatever players he ultimately brings in, we don't have somebody who can score goals. So are we actually doomed to failure no matter what happens? It's time to back Shawnee Maguire. It's yeah. time to say to Shawnee Maguire, listen, you're going to be the first choice, number nine for the Republic of yeah. Ireland. Here's the jersey, son. Go do it. Go do That's it. what we yeah. should do. Back Shawnee Maguire. Uh, I'm not sure about you, but I would certainly believe that his trajectory is still very much on the rise. And in fact, it could point even more vertical. It's him or Boast really is the thing, though. And like he isn't also playing at the top, top, top level. And um, But he will eventually. Still not that like fully regularly. So uh, we hope he will eventually. And we all hope he will eventually. And we hope that that happens sooner rather than later. And actually, he is a guy we can get behind. But uh, I definitely have concerns on. Doomed to failure is what I'm, uh, what I'm going with this morning. Back Shawnee is all I'm saying. Uh, Easter promise, so this is obviously in relation to the football as well, on the front page of the Hurl this morning, previewing that game and more good stuff inside from Giles Pope and uh, Frank Roach as well. Uh, the Racing Post this morning with the uh, flat season ahead of us has a full-on good pull-out here of the uh, flat season which gets underway here in Nace. Uh, this Sunday we're going to be talking to Ed Chamberlain about that in a little bit. But also millionaire owner banned for laying his own horse is the headline from the Racing Post today and this is in relation to an owner who's uh, denied any wrongdoing. Uh, Stephen Burdett uh, from Scunthorpe in the UK have disqualified with immediate effect after being found to have broken the rules as a registered owner on two occasions when he laid a couple of his horses. Uh, and yeah, so that was it. He says he's massively disappointed to be disqualified for what uh, is just an innocent mistake. So you can get more details on that story there in the Racing Post. The Telegraph this morning, I mean, it's the one you've all wanted to see to pour over. Uh, the outcome of England's tragic and pretty chronic uh, defeat. 58 all out, was that the...? Yeah, that was their innings against New Zealand yesterday. New Zealand, uh, yeah. Uh, it's been just a desperate week for English sport in general, and we don't really care about the cricket, obviously, but since we're in the kind of mode of English bashing, we may as well add this to our ammo and uh, say, screw you, England, once again. It's pretty good, to be fair. They've done a good job on sort of visually describing exactly what a shit show was uh, happened yesterday. Yeah. That's the uh, Telegraph, the Guardian here. Embarrassing is what they go with. It's pretty simple there. Uh, and uh, more reflections on that defeat yesterday. Southgate's race is a morning. Get our house in order before criticising Russia. This is really great stuff from Gareth Southgate, I have to say. It really speaks to the point that we've just been making, that it's very easy to go, those pesky Russians and their um, approach to and their behaviour around all those sort of things and actually holding a mirror up to ourselves is probably not a bad, uh, not a bad place to be.